Is it like a specific work ethic, raw talent, or it factor that you kind of seen a trend? Are those others you work with? Um, yeah, it's a combination. It's an it factor. It's uh, I still believe that songs are the base of everything. I think that great songs can make a great artist. You know, I'm a true believer of that. But I, I do believe that um, the artist has to have an it factor, something okay. about them that's electric. I mean, it doesn't have to be a great voice, necessarily. Um, I always use Bobby Brown as my example, because Bobby was no great singer. The energy and the attitude that Bobby had, that he brought to the songs that we wrote for him, his, him being Bobby Brown was just as important as don't be cruel or every little step or right. rock with you. Right. You know, those songs wouldn't have been the same had Bobby Brown not been Bobby Brown because it was his attitude, not his singing voice, it was his attitude that, that he brought to the songs that we wrote that made together mm -hmm. everything worked. Nice. Yeah. Wow. End of the Road, it was I thought it was a we thought it was a really good song. Mm -hmm. You know, like most of the songs we we usually don't quit on a song until we feel like it's really good. You know, it's hard to say what numbers it's going to do because nobody can predict that. Right. But, you know, we did know that it was a special song. And we especially knew it was a special song when Babyface wanted to keep it for himself. So L.A. and I really knew how special it was because he said, hey, I can't let this one go. And, you know, we had written it for Boys to Men, which yeah. most people don't know it was for a soundtrack. It was not for their album. It was for the Boomerang soundtrack. soundtrack. That's right. where it came from. It didn't right. come from their album. Right. And so when it was done, you know, Face wanted to keep it for his album. And LA and I were like, well, you can't keep it. <laughs> you know, he was like, well, I can't let it go because it's too good. Yeah. And we were telling him, it will be much bigger on Boys to Men than it will be on you. And he said, well, let me record it. And we said, okay, we'll let you record it. It went that far. Well, it went that far. We went in the studio, and he went in the booth, and he sang it down, and he took the headphones off and said, okay, they can have it. Because nah. he knew that it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't coming across the way he knew that it would come across with Wine Gay and Shine Shine and, and yeah, yeah. just all the elements that they had because it was written that way. It was a setup song. True. You know what I mean? It was set up and Nate starts and then Sean comes in and Wine Gay comes in and right. kills the, you know, the deep part. So, yeah, so. But, it, but we felt like it was a good song, but no, we didn't, we didn't know it was going to do what it did here at 13 weeks of number one. Jeez. It was, I knew it was good when people said they were tired of hearing that song. I right. said, good. Thank That's you. A good thing. Thank you. Good. So, you those are the things, things that you look for. You look for something, some kind of a spark, something that's different. And I try to tell kids, don't get hung up on <clears throat> the best singer, necessarily. Sometimes I'd rather have that singer that's mediocre, but their star quality is off the chart. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's not the singing business. It's the right. entertainment it's business. It's the it's song. People say, what do you do? I said, I'm a songwriter. They go, why aren't you a producer? I go, yeah, I'm a songwriter. I started off writing songs. I didn't want to be a producer. Right. I didn't know what a producer did. Right. Producer fell in my lap because LA and Babyface were so busy. Hey, you got to help us do this work. You got to go do this. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do it. LA was like, well, you, what are you been doing all this time? <laughs> right. Yeah, sitting on this couch watching us. I said, yeah. you figure it out. Do what we do. I'm like, okay. And that's how I became a producer. I had no desire to become a producer. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a songwriter. I think it's made it too easy for people. I think it's made people lazy. Where in the old, you know, the, the face days, there wasn't an opportunity. All those records that we did, TLC, Tony Braxton, there was no opportunity. We made them, they had to sing. They had to stay there until they sang it right. Until right. they sang it right. in tune or in key. We couldn't fix that. No Pro Tools. No Pro Tools back then so we there was a lot of there was a lot more work that we had to do so i appreciate the convenience everything is right there in my computer uh sometimes we still will go and get a, a person to play it because sometimes there's still something about a machine that's a machine versus human nature human feel and we do that with faces albums where he'll program the drum machine but then we'll bring in a drummer to play on top of it. And when we A, B it, it's so much more feeling because it's sort of, like John Legend says, that perfect imperfection. Like it's not perfect, it's close, but everything in the computer is perfect. Right. 
And, and I'm a believer that some of the best things that we've done are not perfect. Like I said, there's still to this day when I hear, what is it? It's either Rock With You or, it must be Rock With You or Bobby, he's so flat. <laughs> but it feels so damn good, uh -huh. you ignore it. Right. Because you know what? It's the intent. It's not what comes out, it's what he intended. So in his head, you couldn't tell Bobby that he didn't sound good. Because his intent was, I sound good as hell. Mm -hmm. You really don't, but the feeling that you gave me, and the chill bumps that you gave me, okay, I'll keep that, I'll accept that Bobby, because it was, it was a true feeling. So it doesn't have feeling. Right. That's what I miss more than anything. I don't get, I don't get emotion and feeling. I like to get chill bumps. I like the hair to stand up on my arm. Mm -hmm. Like when I hear Wanye sing at the end of the road, I still get chill bumps. Oh yeah, this day. I still get chill bumps to this day. Twenty five years, whatever it is later, because what what he gave, what that what that feeling was that we captured, that feeling is still. Here, whenever you hear that record, as well as a lot of other records. Oh, yeah. You know, not records that I wrote, but just songs or records that we hear that were done. Still the test of time, right? Yeah, but still the test of time. But that's probably the biggest thing, is I miss emotion from the technology. Yeah, technology. But I, that was LA's calling. Because right. when we came up, he did the business. He would go and take those meetings with Clive Davis and all those people, and Face and I would stay back and work on the work right. studio, work on the music. And he would come to the studio with me at the end of the day. So he would put on that. Coat and tie, and, and he loved that. Mm -hmm. and even to this day, he 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 was a great executive for us. Right. Uh, and if he hadn't been the way that he was, we wouldn't have had that same success because right. Face and I were more low key, right. suburban kids. Where LA had a hard nose for business, and going in there and arguing with somebody and fighting for our on money your behalf. on our behalf. Exactly. So I, I, I tell people that a lot of people always say, "What did LA do?" I said. He did a lot of things that he wasn't credited for, right. but mainly he was he was our business guy. He was our bulldog. He was the bad guy. Exactly. He'd go in there and piss somebody off. You need that bad guy. And you need that bad guy. Mm -hmm. You know, the result was the success of LaFace and all the artists that we had on LaFace. Superwoman was written for Karen White. Most of our songs, most people don't realize, most of our biggest songs, other than Boys to Men, were female songs. Mm -hmm. Most of our biggest records are feet for some reason, I don't know why, but that always turned out. But Super One was just a, uh, I don't know, Face and I always had this thing of knowing, of, we felt like we knew what, you know, women wanted to say. Right. You know what I mean? In some weird kind of way. You know, we grew up as shy kids. Um, that's how we kind of started songwriting, because we were very shy. I mean, I was terrified to talk to a girl at school. But I could write a song for a girl and tell her how I felt about her. And she was like, oh my God, that's so cute. You're so special. And that was, I found out that was the winning ticket. So growing up, we, we discovered if you tapped into that woman's feelings and into her heart, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, that's what I need that man to say. So that's kind of how it came about. Really, really. Okay. 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 And come to see you well in your face. You hit Don't Be Cruel, was yeah. that? He got kicked out of the audition, said, hey, Bobby got kicked out of the audition. And remember, Bobby had an album before that. Right, right. So he had had a little bit of success. We didn't do the first album, but when he came, he was in need of, you know, he needed hits, he needed to, to happen. Make a statement, right. Make a statement. Mm -hmm. And he was, I remember meeting him, and he, he was, he was just a bad boy. <laughs> He was so damn bad, just so vulgar and so, once again, he had that energy. Yeah. Just, this dude couldn't sit down, and, you know, he stayed at the strip club. I'm like, Bobby, where are you? I'll be there in a minute, dude, at the strip club, I'll be there. And I'm sitting at the studio waiting, like, two hours later, and he just was such a bad... Force of nature. Just bad. It just <laughs> dripped, it dripped off of him. Right. I mean, I think even in, from Bobby's career, I think he was sort of infamous because he was sort of more known for the bad stuff that he got into as opposed to I mean the records were good he had a great career but I'm saying he was just as famous for the bad stuff that he did but he came in and uh, Don't Be Cruel started actually with a drum beat that LA had and they said I need a mean drum beat for now and I remember telling him I said well I said, it doesn't matter what we put on top of this because the drum beat is a song itself yeah. and I really felt that way for the first time I felt like that was a song that the drums carried the whole song. Right. And so we were like, okay, all we gotta do is just put 
since L.A. said it was a mean beat, then you know the concept of don't be pretty with him, Bobby. Being with this girl, TLC was a lot more work on Baby, Baby, Baby. It was a lot of work because they didn't really sing the way that we wrote. You know, that was, they were hip-hop. Right, they were hip-hop artists. And most people, that was the only, only hip we really ever had. Because it was sort of an R&D, melody-driven... Hip-hop song. Hip-hop song. Right, right. Which we had to make them sing. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a lot of tune then either. Right. So, I mean, we, it was a lot of work to get the vocals. So yeah, right. To right. me, I would just say spend a lot more time on your songs. Don't just let your friends hear your songs. Don't just let your wife or your girlfriend, because they're going to tell you that it's great and everything you write isn't great. That's not the way this works. If it was that easy, then everybody would be amazing and they would be doing it. So that's what I would say. You've got to really study, because it all starts with the song, even before it gets to the artist. Sometimes you can have a mediocre vocal performance, but if the song is lit, <laughs> you know, um, it'll go. But I would say spend more time on your songwriting, on, your, on, the, on the craft of songwriting and run it by people that don't know you. Run it by somebody who's probably going to tell you the truth. Like I got to tell people, say, don't let me hear no music. You want me to hear music? I do music. I'm going to tell you the truth. So if you want me to hear it, I'm going to tell you. Because that's what I do. I don't sing. I don't dance. I don't have no style. Stylist with clothes and all that. I don't know nothing about that with artists. I'm a song. I write songs. I know hit music. And I will tell you about your music if you let me hear it. So those, those people there, oh, I got 50 songs. Like, okay, well, all of them ain't no good. That's just the average. I say break that 50 down to 25. Break that 25 down to your top 10. Okay, now break that top 10 to five. Where's the real song? Because you know people kind of repeat the same song within another song. That's not like the last song you wrote. And that's why I say that. So then you break it down to three and you might have one good idea. Because I do that at seminars. I got a hundred songs. I wish I had a hundred songs. I probably got three. Really, I probably keep maybe three songs in my wheelhouse that I say, okay, there's potential. And then out of those three, there's one. I'm hoping for one. Because that's all that matters is one. And that's why I tell people, don't focus on, yeah, I got 55 songs, I got 25 songs, I got... Well, if they're garbage, what, what good does it make? It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, one can change your life. And the one will change your life. One song will change your life. I had it, that's what, like you said, it only takes one, and it, and it can change your life. So I say focus on the one great idea. Don't focus on five ideas, because nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna listen to it anyway. If you send it to somebody, or you give it to me, in my head, okay, the first song is the best song. You know, I sat in a, a, an audition with L.A. one day at Epic. I was sitting here, I said, okay, one song. Give me one song, that's all I want. That's it, that's all he cares about. And if it's, it, and if it's that good, then you know, they'll ask you for more. So don't get caught up into this demo, I got this demo, I got this EP. It's a waste of time. Oh, I need to go to a good studio. There's no point in going to a good studio with a bad song. It's still gonna be a bad song. Don't waste your money on a good studio. You can do just as well in your bedroom if it's a great song. I'll hear it. I will hear it. So st the studio has nothing to do with it. The Beatles didn't even have that technology, yo. It didn't exist. You know what I mean? You can sit at the piano and hear a great song. I can, you know what I mean? You can, you can hear it from the melody, from the lyric, just on the piano. So don't get caught up in, oh, I don't have money for a real studio. I don't have money. You know, if you, if you can write on guitar or piano and you can sing or you have a singer, then that's what you put down because I can hear it.